Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. Today, we're diving into an important test of autocorrelation, the Durbin-Watson test. Please like, share and subscribe if you like our content. Visit the Spur Economics website for more knowledge on econometrics, link is in the description. The Durbin-Watson test was developed by economists James Durbin and Jeffrey Watson in the early 1950s. It is a statistical test used to detect autocorrelation in the residuals of regression analysis. Autocorrelation occurs when the residuals or errors from a regression analysis are correlated with each other. In other words, it indicates whether there is a pattern in the residuals suggesting that the assumption of independent errors has been violated. The Durbin-Watson test is applied to the first-order autoregressive scheme where the errors are related only to the previous one-period error. This test does not work well with higher-order autoregressive schemes. To illustrate the test in detail, let us consider the model shown here. Y is dependent variable and X is the independent variable. The error term mu is a function of previous one-period error, that is, mu t minus 1. The coefficient rho associated with mu t minus 1 is known as the autocorrelation coefficient. This rho shows the relationship between mu t and mu t minus 1 and it ranges from minus 1 to 1. Moreover, the model here represents the first-order autoregressive scheme because the error mu is dependent on previous one-period error only. The error term mu from this model can be used to estimate the Durbin-Watson D statistic. The formula for calculating the d-statistic is shown here. In this formula, the denominator is the sum of squared residuals mu. The numerator is the sum of differences of successive residuals mu t and mu t minus 1. The d-statistic ranges from 0 to 4 and a value of d equals 2 means that there is no autocorrelation. The autocorrelation coefficient rho and the d-statistic are related to each other. Their approximate relationship is defined by the equation show here. That is, d is approximately equal to 2 multiplied by 1 minus rho. When the autocorrelation coefficient is 0, the Durbin-Watson d is equal to 2 and there is no autocorrelation. When the autocorrelation coefficient is 1, the d statistic is 0 and we have perfect positive autocorrelation. Conversely, we have perfect negative autocorrelation when d equals 4 because then the autocorrelation coefficient is equal to minus 1. In practice, we use the critical values of d to establish whether autocorrelation exists. The d statistic does not follow any particular distribution. However, Durbin and Watson gave upper and lower limits of d for a different number of observations and explanatory variables. Durbin-Watson table shows these critical values of d and the estimated statistic must lie between these critical limits. If the estimated d statistic lies between these limits dl and du, then there is no autocorrelation. If d is less than the lower critical value dl, then we know that we have positive autocorrelation. On the other hand, if d is greater than the upper critical value du, then we have negative autocorrelation in the residuals. The Durbin-Watson test is easy to apply in R and other software packages. In R, we have to first estimate the OLS model using the LM function. In the command shown here, Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. The data option is used to specify the dataset to be used. Suppose we want to check if the residuals from this OLS model are autocorrelated, then we can use the DW test command provided by the LM test package as shown here. The OLS object in this command contains the results of the model we estimated earlier. This command will estimate the Durbin Watson D statistic and the associated p value. Suppose the results of the command report D statistic as 1.1974 and p value of 0.001329. The p-value is less than 0.05, therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the residuals are autocorrelated in this model. 
Although the Durbin-Watson test is easy to understand and implement, it suffers from some serious problems that limit its applicability. Firstly, the Durbin-Watson test is applicable only to the first-order autoregressive scheme. Therefore, it cannot be used for detecting higher-order autocorrelation which is common in time series data. For this, we must rely on other tests such as the brush godfrey test. Secondly, the residuals must be normally distributed if we want to apply this test. If the residuals are not normal, the results of the test may be biased. Finally, this test should not be applied if the model has lagged dependent variable as one of the independent variable. That is, if y is our dependent variable, then y t minus 1 or other lags of y must not be included as independent variables in the model. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth discussions on econometric topics. Leave your questions and comments below. See you next time!